All right, so it's a pleasure to introduce the next speaker, uh, Giovanni Felder from my alma mater, ETH Zurich, who will tell us about superstring measure and superperiods. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Claudia, and thanks for the invitation. So today I will report on some of the work we are doing with uh, David Kajdan and Sasha Polishuk on, uh, uh, on superstring uh, uh, perturbation theory. So what we are attempting to understand is from a, uh, a point of view of geometry of, of supermoduli space, uh, what, what these statements are of uh, perturbative superstring amplitudes. So, uh, so most of the talk will be a review of, of what that is. I, I hope it will be accessible to a broader audience. And then I will point out some of the subtleties that appear in, in this context and, and that we are trying to, uh, <clears throat> to understand. So this is the plan of my talk. Uh, I will shortly first uh, say, re recall what is what is this super string uh, pertur perturbation theory. And then I will give some uh, introduction to uh, the notions of uh, super geometry <clears throat> and super curves and super moduli spaces that are, are needed for that. And then uh, I will talk about uh, the construction of this uh, super string measure, uh, which goes through the uh, Manford isomorphism and the super period map. And, uh, and then I will explain one of the subtlety that appear there, which has to do with the regularity of the super string measure in higher genus. Okay, so what is super string perturbation theory? So in super string, you have uh, scattering amplitudes and uh, uh, and the formula for super uh, for in, in perturbation theory of this scattering amplitude is a sum over various uh, uh, contribution from a curse of, of genus G. And so if you have a scattering of n particles, you will have a, a sum of, of this type. I think you, I hope you see my little arrow, a sum over a genus with some cop coupling constant lambda. And each contribution at fixed genus is given by an integ integral over moduli space. So this is a rough idea, will be more precise later, but essentially there are two ingredients. There is this integration domain, which is a, a, a moduli space of super curves of genus G and uh, N marked points, also called super Riemann surfaces. And, uh, and then the integrand is a super string measure and uh, it's uh, the integ integration over super manifolds is, is relies on the theory of Beresinian. So you, you, the integration measures take value in these Beresinians. And I will recall what these notions are. And, uh, and so this is well understood and there are various explicit formulas in, uh, in genus up to two. So the genus zero and one goes back to at least 50 years. And, uh, and uh, in genus two, uh, the big progress was done starting from around 2000 where Docker and Fong gave some explicit constructions of, of, uh, of such uh, amplitudes. Uh, but uh, but if you go to higher genus, there are some new features which appear that are not visible up to genus two. So uh, in up to genus two, you have a, a projected or split uh, uh, super manifold you integrate. So you can first integrate over odd variables, and then you can reduce the problem to an integration over classical moduli spaces. And uh, but in higher genus, it is, uh, it is not possible, and this was a cause of many uh, subtleties and problems in, in the development of the theory. And rather recently, Donaghi and Witten showed that, uh, that actually these uh, moduli spaces are not split or not projected even in higher genus. Namely, they are not uh, given by vector bundles with odd parity, which, uh, which give the odd coordinates. And, and then there are other uh, questions like uh, these uh, integrals are, are supposed to be finite, but they are, they are not absolutely convergent. So it is rather subtle to regularize those integrals. You have to know how this uh, form, um, this super sting measure behaves at infinity. And, uh, and and regularized properly. And so there are subtlety from that, from that point of view. 
And also, I should add that uh, I will uh, mostly to, uh, only talk about the very classical uh, Ramon de Schwarz uh, superstring uh, theory. And as we heard yesterday from the talk of Nathan uh, Berkowitz, there are other approaches like this pure uh, spinner approach or uh, uh, Green Schwarz. Um, and uh, and there are also this approach recently developed by uh, Ashoki Sen and collaborators, which rely on, on hyperbolic geometry and uniformization. So there are different approaches, and each of them has uh, its own difficulties. So I will uh, I will review uh, this uh, construction of the superstring measure and the, and the supermoduli space in the simplest construction, simplest case of the vacuum amplitude. So n is zero; you have no particles, just vacuum diagrams in the 10 dimensional uh, flat space uh, super type 2 super string and uh, the result I, I will focus at the end of the talk is this regularity result before before looking at the behavior at the boundary of modular space even inside the modular space there is a question of whether this super string is, is well defined and we would like to discuss that so uh, uh, so our the kind of starting point is a series of papers by Edward Witten in two, around 2012, where he kind of summarized what, what, is, what is known and, and, and clarified several points from our point of view of, uh, of what those uh, superstring perturbation theory integrals are. Okay, so let me start with a short review of this uh, super geometry, complex super geometry, or also algebraic uh, super geometry. So a convenient uh, language, I think this was uh, emphasized by Manning that this is a good language to, uh, to uh, speak about super manifolds, which is kind of uh, known in, in uh, algebraic uh, geometry of non-reduced uh, uh, schemes. So there you, you consider a, a complex supermanifold as a locally ringed space over C. So a locally ringed space means that you have a topological space and a, a, a ring of functions, which is a sheaf of rings. So of every open set, you say, what are the functions I consider? And in complex supermanifolds, the local model is functions on Cn. So the dimension has, is Nm, so n even dimensions and m odd dimensions. Then this is locally isomorphic to this um, space where you have Cn with the usual topology. And uh, Ocn means the holomorphic functions defined on every open set. And uh, you tensor with uh, exterior algebra in m variables. So these are odd variables, theta 1 up to theta n. They, they anti-commute. OK, and then you morphism or morphism of ring spaces over C. So you also, these are not just rings, but they are C algebras. OK, so this is the language that you have. And uh, in this uh, ring of functions, you have uh, this nilpotent ideal, namely the, uh, the ideal generated by odd variables. And if you quotient out by that ideal, you get uh, an ordinary manifold. If you just set those odd variables to zero, you have a manifold. And this is a well-defined uh, construction. And this gives the reduced space, this x red, which you can view as a subspace, subring space of x. And it's a complex manifold. But usually there is no uh, uh, map in the, in the other direction where you where you project from x to x red, and this is this cause of difficulties I was mentioning before. Okay, so this is a, a x super manifold, and there is also a version in algebraic geometry that we use sometimes, which is the super scheme. So again, you have a local ring space, but now. Uh, OX is modeled on uh, uh, on some Z2 graded commutative ring and, and the reduced space is a, is a scheme. Okay, but I'll try to use the language of complex uh, geometry. So then uh, uh, when you do integration, what you want to, to have are top differential forms. So there are no top differential forms in the super case, but uh, still there is an analog of what is called the canonical bundle, namely the exterior powers of the bundle of, of the cotangent bundle of the bundle of one forms, 
the top exterior power. And the role of this canonical bundle is taken uh, by the Berezinian line bundle. So, which I call the small omega x, which is the Berezinian of the, <coughs> of the bundle of one form. And uh, uh, so if you have an N M uh, complex supermanifold, a very explicit way to describe what that is, is to, uh, to give a local basis of, of one forms. And this is given if you have a local coordinates. Say, suppose you have N local even coordinates and M uh, local odd coordinates. So if you take that differential, you get a basis of this um, a uh, sheaf of, of one form or of cotangent bundle. And then by definition, you, you say that a, a basis of this line bundle, of this Bayesian lines bundle is, is given by, uh, by this basis of one form, just as in the case of top forms, you take dz1 wedge dz2 up to dzn. <clears throat> And, but then you, you have to see how, how this depends on the choice of coordinates and the change of coordinates is given by the super determinant or Berezinian of the Jacobian uh, matrix of the change of variables. And this is a super generalization of the determinant. Uh, so if you have, so this, if you have a, an endomorphism of an N, M dimensional super vector space, with block form A, B, C, D, then this is a formula for the determinant and it has good properties. Multiplicative, if you take the product of two matrices, so A, D and R even and B and C are odd, then this is, will be the product of the resilience. And so, so it, it has most properties you expect from, uh, from the determinant. Okay. Then now we can we can say what is a super curve or super uh, Riemann surface. So it is a complex super variety or super manifold of dimension one one. So it has one uh, even uh, complex coordinate and one odd one. And but you have an additional structure which is a distribution, a sub bundle of the tangent bundle of dimension zero one. So it's an odd uh, subspace of this one one dimensional vector space in each point. And uh, it's not uh, integrable. It's uh, the opposite of being integrable, this distribution. Namely, if you take the bracket of, of vector fields in these sub bundles, the super bracket the is, uh, and you, uh, you map it to the, so it is a, the bracket will land in in the even in the, yeah, in, the, in the tangent bundle, but then you quotient by d, uh, then you get an isomorphism. So let me describe this more explicitly in the physicist notation in local coordinates. So in suitable local coordinates, this um, sub bundle. This distribution is generated by some differential operator, which is a super derivative, if you like, derivative respect to odd variables plus theta d over dz. So it is an odd derivation. The whole tangent bundle is spanned by d over d theta and d over dz. And, uh, and uh, this, which is uh, d squared actually, is dz. So these are the kind of super, uh, super uh, symmetry algebra relations. So if you square this, uh, you get the generator of translation, co complex translation, d over dz. And this is a generator of dc modulo this odd derivation. And um, so this is what it is. And, but we, if we want to do moduli spaces, you need uh, families. So you need what is called curve over s. s is a super complex super manifold. And then each fiber, you need uh, such a distributions. Okay, so this is, one story and uh, and then uh, what is important is the analog of abelian differentials on uh, uh, on in classical Riemann, uh, Riemann surface theory uh, it's given again by the canonical bundle so for a curve the canonical bundle is just abelian differentials or holomorphic one forms and the role of it is again given by the Berezinian, as I explained here. So if you have a family, then we write C mod S, which means relative Berezinian. So in each fiber, we have a Berezinian of these one forms. And uh, this you can describe if you have this additional structure of supercurves in terms of the distribution. And this gives a, the 
the, a, a way to express what is this distribution, which is the following story. So we have, by construction, we have this exact sequence. We have a sub-bundle D of the tangent bundle of the curve. And, uh, and the quotient is, uh, uh, as we saw, is through this uh, kind of um, Lie bracket map isomorphic to uh, the tensor square of the of this sub bundle and uh, so you have an exact sequence and the dual is uh, so d minus two is the dual of d2 of the second power uh, tensor power and you have such a, a map a delta which will play an important role and now these Berezinians have these good properties of uh, uh, for exact sequences so the the Berezinian of the middle term is the tensor product of the Berezinian of the extreme terms and you get a formula for the Berezinian which is this uh, 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 canonical bundle in terms of the distribution so there is a little subtlety here because d is odd so it the Berezinian will contribute with a minus one. So you, you get that it's isomorphic to uh, the, the, the inverse. And so now you can view this delta as a map from one forms to, uh, to, uh, uh, to the canonical bundle, but a map from one forms to of OX of OC modules to, uh, to the canonical bundle is the same as a derivation. So a derivation from uh, functions to the canonical bundle. So, so this is kind of the one basic structure feature of these uh, super curves. This map from uh, functions to, uh, to, uh, to to the generalization of one form. So sections of the canonical bundle of the Berezinian. And, uh, and and this also gives a meaning in, in these local coordinates I was ex exp expressing before. So this super derivative as, as, a, as a derivative, as a map from functions to function is not uh, coordinate independent, but if you multiply by, by this uh, symbol here, a section of the Berezinian given by the coordinate, then this is well-defined. So this is our delta, and it is an analog of uh, uh, the, the RAM differential. So actually this, this map here from functions to sections of omega is, uh, is, is the analog of the holomorphic the RAM complex in the super world. And actually it is uh, quasi isomorphic to the, the RAM complex. Okay, so this is uh, uh, the Perezinian. Now, uh, if you want to do uh, deformation theory, uh, if you want to start doing moduli spaces, families of curves, you will need uh, uh, super conformal vector fields, namely, uh, so infinitesimal uh, automorphism of, uh, of super curves. So namely, uh, the definition is uh, so a super conformal vector field is a vector field, a section of the tangent bundle, so I write C modulo S because I think in families, which preserves the distribution in the sense that the bracket with the distribution lands in the distribution. So it, uh, this is a condition that it preserves the super conformal structure. And, and actually it is not obvious from this definition, but this is actually a, a, a line bundle. It's, a, it's, a, it's an OC module. So, uh, so actually, the, the, so as in this exact sequence, we had a map from tangent uh, shift to the square of this distribution, which is, uh, so the distribution is the inverse to the canonical bundle. And so uh, if you restrict it to super conformal vector field, you get a, an isomorphism to uh, the, uh, the second, tensor power of the dual of the canonical bundle. So in particular, it is a line bundle. And then uh, there is a standard uh, story of, of Kodaira Spencer, which, uh, which says you that the, the, the infinitesimal deformations of, uh, of an object like this uh, are classified by uh, each one with coefficients in the in this uh, appropriate tangent shift, which in this case is a, a super conformal vector field. 
So, so this this tells you that uh, by third duality, which ap which appears from the fact that you have a, a canonical bundle, which is dualizing sheaf in this case, you get uh, this description of the infinitesimal deformations. Okay, so uh, let me be a little more explicit about these things. So the, you can be more explicit if you are over an even base. So you, you remember we have family over some base. And uh, let me check how we are this time. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so if the uh, base is even, so you don't have kind of odd parameters. Um, uh, for instance, if you're just a point, you have a single curve, then you can uh, describe your super curve completely in terms of classical uh, geometry, namely in terms of spin structures, or some people call them theta characteristics, it's a very classical story, uh, on, an, on an ordinary curve. So what is a spin structure? A spin structure is a line bundle over a, over a curve or Riemann surface, together with an isomorphism uh, with the abelian differential. So omega c0 are just abelian differentials, one forms. Uh, so it's a square root of, uh, of one form. So if you have a given uh, uh, curve, then you have two to the g uh, such uh, uh, spin structures where g is a genus up to isomorphism. Okay, and then given uh, given such a, a, a line bundle, so such a spin structure, then you can describe your uh, sheaf of super functions as the uh, even functions, uh, the usual holomorphic functions, and sections of the uh, of the of the bundle. So lo in local coordinates, we we would write a super function as something like this: f zero plus f one times theta, and theta square is zero. And so what you should think of is that this f1 is actually not a function, but is a section of the of this uh, line bundle L. And, uh, and the, um, the canonical bundle has one part, which is a second one, which is a square L squared, which are the abelian differentials, like in the, in the usual in uh, the theory of, of, uh, of Riemann surfaces. But it's actually generated by this odd part, by L. L, L is uh, so, uh, so in, in local coordinate, you have some function f0 of the even coordinate times this d theta, d, d theta, uh, dz d theta, which you should think of as a section of L times uh, uh, plus something like this. Okay, so this is the local description, but uh, intrinsically it is given by a, a spin uh, curve, spin structure on the curve. So, and then there is a description also of this delta, this basic structure, which is the, the RAM differential in the even parts. You go from OC0 to omega C0, the differential, and it is the identity on, on this L part. Okay, so this is a description. And uh, so now if you have a general family of super curves over a general base, which is a super uh, complex super manifold, and you restrict to the reduced part, which is an even, then it is a family of curves with spin structure, but, uh, but in general, it does not have a such a, a simple description. Okay, so let's talk about moduli now. We, have, we, we, we talked already about the formation theory a little bit, and this is, um, so the moduli space of super curves, which classifies, is, uh, should classify those super curves of g. So I, I'll give the description for genus larger than two. For smaller genus, there are some subtlety, which I will not mention here. So uh, it has two components, uh, uh, depending on the even and odd spin structure. So I will come back to what it means to be even and odd, but so it has these two components. And the reduced space, as, as we saw, if you, if you go to the reduced, uh, parameter space, you will get uh, uh, spin curves. So you get moduli spaces of curves of genus G with even or odd uh, spin structures. And, uh, and it was shown that this is a smooth, uh, the lean Manford stack of dimension, 3G minus 3, 2G minus 2. And this 3G minus 3, 2G minus 2, you can read off the, 
by computing the cotangent bundle as we discussed before. So the cotangent bundle is this uh, uh, H0 with uh, is a dual to this H1. So it is C with a third power of this canonical sheaf at a curve C, super curve C. And it has uh, uh, two pieces is generated by L3. And uh, so it has a comp odd component, which is L3. Uh, which is 2G minus 2 dimensional. And then one piece, which is L fourth, which is uh, a billion differential squared, which are quadratic differentials. And this is the classical theory of uh, dimension uh, 3G minus 3. Okay, so uh, this is the story. Okay, so this was about the... <coughs> The, the moduli space. So we want to integrate over those moduli space. More precisely, we'll, we will have to take for type two theory, uh, two copies of the moduli space, one complex conjugate to the other, and we want to into, in, integrate over the diagonal. So we'll have to couple left movers and right movers. But basically this is a integration domain where we want to integrate something. But now to uh, define the, object we want to integrate, we will use uh, another classical piece of math, which is this Manford isomorphism. And uh, uh, so, so uh, over this modular space, we have a, a, a universal curve. So, so um, MG classifies uh, isomorphism class of of uh, genus G super curves, and for each class you have a fiber, you have a, a curve C, which is which is in that class. And so you have this super uh, universal curve, which I call, so I abbreviate the basis S again. And so um, now, so what is this Manford isomorphism? My, 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 uh, my Manford isomorphism are relations between uh, the uh, derived direct images of the uh, these powers of the canon, canon, canonical sheaves. So what does it mean? So if you have any line bundle on the, on the super curve, then uh, we have a cohomology sheaf. So this so-called R P star E, and uh, it's very, which is a, a vector bundle or a coherent sheaf in general, and its Berezinian is a line bundle. Uh, on MG. So what is this R P star of, of E? So fiber by fiber, if you could do that, but you cannot really do it because you have these odd uh, directions, but fiber by fiber, you just take the cohomology of, uh, of, the, of, of the curves with coefficients in, in this line bundle. And this dot indicates the degree of the cohomology. And uh, so in each fiber, you have the cohomology, and then you take some, the, Berezin, the alternating product of Berezinians of the various cohomology co groups, and this is a Berezinian. And, and that is a line bundle over the base on the moduli space in this case. So in general, it could be that uh, uh, this direct image, derived direct image is not locally free, is not a, a vector bundle. But the Berezinian is always okay. It's a, it's a, it's a line band. And, and uh, I, uh, there's a quick yes, question. There is a question Ezra, from Ezra Getzler. Um, are these yeah, Ezra. actual derived functors for abelian categories or something more subtle? Uh, no, not nothing more subtle. Uh, yes, derived functor. Okay, right. Thanks. Uh, yes. So uh, right. And now, so for for so so there are various relations between these uh, direct images, so derived direct images, the Berezinians. Uh, but relevant for the integration is uh, uh, is when you take uh, uh, the canonical uh, bundle of the base of the moduli space. S is a moduli space, and as we saw, it is uh, uh, the direct zimat of the third power of. Uh, of the canonical bundle of the curve, of the universal curve. And uh, so, so Manford defined this uh, isomorphism in the case of, uh, in, the, in the classical case, not the super case. And uh, um, so he was uh, relating the canonical bundle to the 13th power of the direct image of 
abelian differential. But in the super case, there is a variant of that, which is uh, this. So this was, I think, uh, due to Voronov and Rosli Schwarz Voronov. So there is this canonical isomorphism between the fifth power of the image of or the, uh, construction for, for a super version of abelian differentials and, uh, and, and this, which is the, uh, the, the Berezinian of, of the third power. So actually only the, the, the I write R, but only the R0 contributes. So it is really this P star. So this is the, what we are looking for. So, so to integrate something, we want, uh, we want a section of this Berezinian on the right hand side. And we will construct this section starting from a section of the left hand side where we have sections of the bundle of, uh, of one forms. So, so okay, the right hand side, as I said, is uh, the Berezinian of the cotangent bundle. So it's a canonical sheaf of the modular space. And on the left hand side, we have these uh, abelian differentials, basically the generalization of the abelian differentials. And they are, they are basically classical objects or in one-to-one -one correspondence with classical objects. You can, uh, at the generic points of the moduli space, uh, the R0 will, is just G-dimensional, just as a, in the classical case, it has G uh, differentials. And, uh, and R1 is one dimensional, it is like in the classical case. But subtleties happen at special points in the moduli space, as we will see. In any case, we will use this um, isomorphism to, uh, to give a sections on the right hand side by giving a section on the left hand side. But before doing that, we need to go to this, uh, include also right, left moving modes, not only right moving. Uh, but before I do that, I have a little slice, a slide on the compactification. So to understand this, uh, the behavior at infinity of the super, uh, of this super measure, you will need to know what infinity is, namely we need a compactification of this moduli space of curves. So I have a little slice on that. Uh, and then I will return to the construction of the super, of the super measure. Um, Giovanni, maybe a yes. short question. So is there a conceptual reason for why the numbers five and three appear here? Yeah, three, I think we saw before. It is uh, it, it came from this uh, uh, Kodaira-Spencer theory. So uh, the correct uh, number is minus one. So it is H1 of, of the tangent sheaf of, of conformal super. Uh, super conformal vector fields. And if you dualize, you get the power three. So that comes from Kodaira Spencer theory. The left hand side, if, if, I, if I still were a physicist, I would say that this comes from the fact that you have a 10, that uh, super thing lives in 10 dimensions. But otherwise it's a computation. It's, um, so actually there are, there are many relations between these powers of K and um, so it's a computation. Okay, thanks. Um, right, so uh, a little slice on stable supercurves. So this uh, uh, moduli space uh, of, uh, of, uh, of supercurves admits a compactification, which is a moduli space of stable supercurves. So this, uh, th th I think the, the correct definition of this stable supercar was, was introduced long ago by, by Dolin in a, in a letter that you can find on his webpage, letter to Manning. And uh, uh, so the starting point is this map delta that I, I had before. You have a map delta from functions to section of the, of the canonical bundle, which is replaced actually by the dualizing shift because you also want to const have uh, uh, singular curves, but with at most nodal singularity. These are the stable super curves. Okay, and then there is a, a, a compactification, which is a smooth Dolin Manford super stack. And this is described, at least it's outlined in this letter of the line. And recently there are in our paper, we also give a construction of that uh, super stack. And, uh, and as in the classical case, uh, the non-compactified, non, uh, the usual moduli space 
is a complement uh, of a normal crossings divisor in, in delta. And there are two components of that divisor, the so-called, depending on the nodes, so um, uh, never Schwarz node or Ramon node. So, uh, and so this Malfort isomorphism extends actually to a, a, an isomorphism uh, between, um, between again the canonical sheaf on, or the rising sheaf on the supermodular space and uh, the fifth power of, uh, of the Berezinian of abelian differentials. Uh, but uh, with uh, but twisted by this uh, by this thing and this we proved but it is a kind of it's a geometric understanding what is known by physicists in in their language they say that this uh, amplitudes has a second order pole at at never schwarz nodes and it has a, a first order pole at ramon, ramon uh, schwarz nodes okay so this was uh, about super a stable super curves, but let's go back to this uh, um, um, Manford isomorphism. How to use uh, this Manford isomorphism to construct a, a, an integral form or a section of the Berezinian on the super uh, uh, modular space that you can integrate. So the first thing you have to do is to uh, to take two copies in the type two. Uh, a super string, you take a, a product of uh, uh, the moduli space with another, sorry, with another copy, uh, uh, which is uh, with opposite complex structure, if you like. And uh, so this is a section of the Berezinian of that thing. And, uh, and this psi g is defined on the diagonal uh, or on the quasi diagonal, I will just say what that is. And uh, so, uh, but it's actually defined in, a, in a, an open neighborhood of, the, of this generalized diagonal. So it will be a section of the product, exterior pro product of the Berezinians uh, of these one forms uh, on, on a neighborhood of the quasi diagonal. So, so what is a quasi-diagonal? So this, it, in the physics language, uh, this is what 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 is meant when when you say that you sum our spin structures. So uh, the diagonal consists of pairs of curves which are complex conjugate to each other, but they not, don't need to have the same complex structure. They might they have the same underlying curve up to complex conjugation. <clears throat> but with possibly different uh, spin structures. So this is a quasi-diagonal. And this is important for this GSO cancellation. <clears throat> anyway, so this is uh, what we are after. So we, we kind of double the thing. We, we have left movers and right movers, and but we are in the neighborhood of the diagonal. And now to uh, the next observation is that on this uh, P star of omega C, uh, this uh, abelian differentials or sections of the canonical bundle, we have a canonical pairing, Cassis-Quirinar pairing, so holomorphic, anti-holomorphic in, in the arguments, which is the analog of just integrating a differential form over the curve. So this can be defined also on super curve. There is kind of more intrinsic way to define it, but it's basically the integral of alpha uh, beta bar. So I guess, uh, do I have still something like 10 minutes? Or, yeah. uh, yes, you have you have 11 minutes. But there was also a, a brief question um, by Greg Moore. Yes, what, please. what is the superscript on MD? Ah, plus. So so this is means even spin structures. So the the, the, the uh, so if you look at vacuum amplitudes, uh, the odd part gives zero basically by definition because of uh, fermionic zero modes. And so this is uh, even. So I will come back to the definition of even spin structure, but this is uh, plus means even, sorry. And you have 10 minutes, 11 minutes. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, right. So, so we have this non -degen actually non-degenerate uh, pairing between, uh, um, right, on, on this uh, one form. So we have a section, a canonical section on the product of corresponding Berezinian bundles. So you take just uh, uh, 
Uh, right, so you have a, this, this, this screen for this emission form gives you a, a canonical section of, uh, of this thing. I, I will give a more explicit formula. And now we can, uh, if we take the fifth power of this section, we will get a, a power of Berezinian to the fifth times Berezinian to the fifth. We can apply the Montford isomorphism and we will get uh, something which we can integrate, a super a string measure. So by definition, the super string measure for the vacuum amplitude will be the image of the fifth power of this canonical section uh, by the Manford isomorphism. So it's, you have, this is a Manford isomorphism. You do it both for the right movers and the left movers. And, uh, and then you, you get rid of this uh, uh, fifth power of, of the push forward of the omega c and 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 you are and you get uh, this that you can integrate over the diagonal now okay so so this is a basic construction and then there are various uh, questions about uh, behavior whether this is integrable and so on we, and the exact definition of the cycle of integration, these are a question I will not approach, but what I would like to point out is uh, this red thing here, that actually this uh, object here has problems, not only at the boundary of modular space, but also in the middle of it on, on, on a certain divisor, which is called theta null divisor. So, so we integrate over this generalized diagonal, uh, but uh, but a priori this is only defined away from this uh, theta null divisors and this little two means that uh, actually the theta null divisor is a divisor in the moduli space of even uh, spin structures but here we have a product so we have to take the corresponding moduli space in the product namely the product of the, modu the divisor times the moduli space union the moduli space times a divisor. But basically this is defined away from, from a divisor. And uh, we want to discuss that in the last few minutes of my talk. So what is this theta divisor? So now I will be more precise about this uh, uh, even story and odd. So the definition is a spin structure L uh, on a curve is called even if uh, uh, the dimension of the global sections is even. And this is a well-defined definition because uh, the dimension of the global sections is constant in modulo two is constant in family, only jumps by, by two. And so uh, generic it is zero, but, uh, but at some divisor it is two and then at uh, some higher co-dimension sub uh, manifold it is four and so on so the spin structures the modular space of spin structure has this decomposition correspondingly you have this decomposition i was talking about of the super moduli spaces so at the generic point of this moduli space you have no sections it is zero. This even number is zero but on this theta null divisor it is uh, it is two at the generic point but it, it can be also higher so this is a higher uh, genus uh, phenomenon it starts with genus three and and, and so on so you don't see it at genus one and two and uh, so the, uh, in that case, then you have kind of global functions. You don't, not only the uh, constants are, are globally defined functions on your curve, but also some odd functions. And also each zero will jump by, by an even number. And so, so this uh, super string measure has potential singularities as we approach these theta null divisors because uh, it's not uh, the, this direct image is not locally free. You have non-trivial R1, so the dimension jumps. And, uh, uh, and so here there are kind of two phenomena that appear. So this leads to divergences. Uh, of the period matrix, for instance, and this was first computed by Docker and Fong, that you have this uh, divergence. And but you have also a compensating factor because in the language of physics, you have more fermionic zero modes, which uh, which will compensate some of the divergences. So uh, in low genus, you expect uh, you expect still that you get a, a well-defined. Uh, 
string measure, but when you approach that divisor, you can have problems. And so let me uh, maybe speed up a little bit. So let me be a little more explicit here. So we have this fifth power of this canonical section, uh, which is by the Mumford isomorphism. So the picture will be like this. So suppose you have a base uh, very explicitly away from the divisor. You have a basis which is in one-to-one -one correspondence with basis of abelian differentials, and you can normalize them by, as Riemann did with A cycles and, uh, and cons construct a period matrix. So a, a section of this uh, fifth power will be given away from the divisor by something like this product exterior power of this um, abelian differentials, and you divide by uh, the determinant of the pairing, which can be written by Riemann relations as the imaginary part of your period super period matrix. matrix. So, uh, so we need to understand uh, the behavior as we approach that divisor of the, denom the numerator theta and the denominator uh, omega, the period matrix, as we approach the divisor, right? So, so the first theorem is that uh, uh, is uh, uh, so locally around a point of the divisor we have a, an equation for the divisor. So we have a function, a super function with the following properties that uh, F vanishes on the divisor to first order when we restrict to the reduced space. So it is an equation of the, of the classical divisor when we, when we go to the restrict to the reduced space, the modular space of a spin curves. And, and this object, which away from the divisor has its form. So this is a, kind of abuse of notation if I write it, it was omega one to omega g. So this numerator, uh, when you approach the divisor is f square, is a square of this function times something which is non-vanishing. So the, the line boundary is defined also over the divisor, but the section that we start by this construction uh, it, it, uh, vanishes there to second order. And this is related to the fact that you have this jumping by two. And if you multiply this function, the period matrix by this function, you have a regular function. So what is a consequence of this uh, uh, estimate is that the super uh, string measure is actually well defined in low genus and we, uh, so this is, uh, observed by Witten in his uh, reviews in his uh, in his papers on holomorphic string theory in low uh, genus, but we can uh, we can say up to which genus this this works. So the super sim, uh, string measure is regular in a neighborhood of this diagonal of the if the genus is at most uh, eleven, and we don't know what happens in genus twelve. Okay, so uh, so in the remaining. Uh, how, uh, minute or so, I will explain how to, uh, where this g equal to two, uh, 11 comes from. Namely, uh, right, so what, what is our formula? Our formula is fifth power of the theta divided by the fifth power of the, uh, of, of the imaginary part, the determinant of the imaginary part of the period matrix. So the Manford isomorphism is just smooth, there is no problem there. So we need to understand the behavior of this. So the fifth power, since uh, theta has a second order zero, it will behave as f to the 10, as a 10th power. And then there is an additional input that actually the period matrix, when restricted to the uh, modular space of curve, reduced space, is actually regular. It is a, the Riemann period matrix, which is regular there, doesn't know anything about spin structures. So the pole which arises is nilpotent, is at least of quadratic in the odd variables. So this is a behavior. And, uh, uh, and so since the dimension is, odd dimension is 2g minus 2, uh, the uh, uh, the mth power of a, a of the of this ideal is zero for uh, m bigger than than g over two. So if you compute now the determinant of of the period matrix, it will be something regular times a finite Taylor expansion, which will stop at g minus one because because higher terms are are zero. 
So you get a pole of order at, at most uh, g minus one. And then if you, if you take the difference between 10 and g minus one, you get 11 minus g, which is regular uh, if, uh, if g is less or equal to 11. So uh, I, I will, I had some words about how to prove that too, but I will, I will stop here. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for the beautiful talk. Are there any questions? Ezra? Uh, just I had a very easy question, a simple question. You had said in a neighborhood of the diagonal in yes. the product, did you mean the risky neighborhood? Um, Maybe, but I know. I mean, I, I, I meant uh, uh, analytic neighborhood. Ah. But but yeah. I believe uh, because uh, I believe it is true in a, no. In a, I think it's an analytic neighborhood. Yes. So that function, the section is not a rational section. It's an that's uh, right. So it has oh. right. It has actually um, right. It has logarithmic behavior at the oh at okay. infinity, so you better be analytic topology. So because this story when you started taking that product, it reminded me of quasi Fuchsian space, and I just wanted to remark that there's some sort of analytic extension of the Fenchel Nielsen coordinates uh -huh. quasi Fuchsian space. Is there any sort of Fenchel Nielsen perspective on what you were talking about? Yeah, I suppose so. I don't. I, I don't really. Uh, no, I, I. I don't know. But I, I assume that uh, people who are doing this uh, uniformization approach to this will, will know. I, but I don't. Okay, um, Greg Moore. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask about the uh, way you're implementing the sum over spin structures. Yes. Um, so, I mean, there are many ways to implement the sum over spin structures and, you know, some ways will lead to integrals which are certainly going to diverge, like the type zero string, and others we hope will lead to something finite. Um, and, the, you know, the different ways can be described in terms of introducing a coupling to a, a B field described by a quadratic function on the set of spin structures. Um, or coupling to a topological phase. There are different ways of saying it. But anyway, uh, I was wondering if you had thought about uh, whether the sum over spin structures might uh, help cure some of these divergences, uh, or potential divergences at, at genus greater than 11. Uh, right. You know, I think maybe so. I have no idea. I, I don't. I don't know any kind of possible mechanism that would cure this uh, uh, this in genus twelve. But uh, so so maybe. But, but you're giving that, us the result. You're giving us the result that particular choices of left and right moving spin structures, right? Uh, right, but so the, 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 the so it might be that some miracle appears. But a priori, what you would uh, see is that so suppose you have a curve of genus twelve, and uh, and so you are on a on a on on one of those points of where where you have non-trivial the spin uh, section of the spin bundle. Uh, now, uh, typically, you would not expect that if you change your spin structure with the same underlying curve that we, we, we would again uh, be on, on that, uh, on, uh, to have a I think, I think. Yeah, that's a good so point. No, yeah. Except some miracle appears, this might not I, I, Okay, Okay, that's a good point. Um, it's pretty odd, but, um, but well, I, I mean, I, just as a remark, I don't, I don't think that the, the measure uh, for superstring, the superstring measure wasn't completely determined because you do really need to specify this B field or how to sum over spin structures. Um, so that's, 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 an, that's an extra ingredient, which is quite crucial. 
and will change dramatically the properties of the theory. Right. So, so yeah, I'd, I'd like to learn that. But so, so our point of view is that so the this Mumford form is kind of uniquely determined. So, a absolutely. But that's just the holomorphic half. Then, then there is a, a, another question, which is uh, about the integration cycle. So, I, I said there is this. What what does it mean to have summer spin structure? So, it is uh, you know in the in the super world uh, there is a notion which is not defined. Is is uh, is uh, is, if you have a super curve, there is no way to say what is a sup another super curve which differs from this one only about uh, by not having the same spin structure. And so, uh, what you have is actually this integration cycle. So, you, you integrate over this uh, um, cycle, this quasi diagonal, where you have pairs uh, so that the underlying curves uh, are the same but you don't say that they have the same spin structure. And so, so the GSO projection and that stuff uh, appears when, because when you approach the infinity, then you have kind of two branches of those uh, 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 integration cycles, which, which meet and, uh, uh, and cancel each other. So the second order pole will cancel, and then you have to, to take care of the first order pole. And Witten gives, at least in his uh, review, uh, a way to do that with uh, with uh, cutoff functions. And so, at least, I think that that at least in that paper, this kind of definite procedure of how to how to do it. But still, I I, I would be happy if somebody would tell me what is expected in Genus Twelve. So are you saying that this divergence is non-integrable? Right. So, so, uh, so, so your claim is that if we take the GSO projected, one of the standard GSO projections of this of the type two superstring, there's a divergence at genus twelve. So no, it's, uh, right. So so there are divergences at the boundary of moduli spaces and divergences in this divisor. So about the, the divergences at this divisor, uh, I uh, I don't know what happens in genus twelve. I don't see any reason why that this pole could cancel. Maybe there are some mechanisms. I don't know uh, the mechanism. Then uh, what I was commenting now is about these other divergences that you have at the boundary of moduli spaces. And there you have the GSO projection, which comes from this sum over spin structure, which can be translated in this choosing this uh, quasi diagonal as an integration cycle. And also there, there are some, uh, so no, so there, there are no divergences. There are uh, kind of uh, non absolutely convergence integrals that need regularization, and there is a way to regularize them. So, but at the genus 12 on the on the on this divide null theta divisor i have no idea what happens so a priori there could be a divergence which i don't know how it can be cured and maybe someone has a, an expectation what should happen there um, okay raimundo so uh, Giovanni, so you have one canonical section uh, that you construct here, and and if I understand correctly, if you, if you grab uh, conformal blocks for the nouveau schwartz vertex algebra at a particular central charge, I suppose central charge 10 should give you also sections of this determinant bundle or this Berzinian bundle on the moduli space. Uh, so I wonder if you are identifying in terms of conformal blocks, some particular conformal block. So so here we are. We are doing the the ten-dimensional super string. So I, I, are you referring to some compactification? So this is just flat space ten-dimensional. Yeah, but uh, Schwarz Ramon. So if I if I if I grab the Nebel Schwarz vertex algebra and I move it up, I put it on on each super curve, uh, on, on one one super curve as you have, and I move it about. This produces uh, a bundle with a connection which is equivalent. It's a, it's the same as your Berezinian bundle on this moduli space. And flat sections of those are given by conformal blocks of this, uh, of this uh, Nebel-Schwarz vertex algebra. 
So to each such conformal block, it should correspond a section uh, in your bundle and you have one particular which is specified. So I wonder if it, how does it relate to the representation theory of Neville Schwartz? Right, but, uh, but here we are talking about the kind of free field, right? Free field in 10 dimensions. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure, yeah, maybe. So, so you are saying that there are more general ways to. I mean, the space of conformal blocks for, for, for that central charge is, in, I don't know what the dimension is, but I suppose that this, in, this grows with genus. So, so this, is a, this is a larger, larger space with the, with the genus. And in all of these spaces, you're specifying a particular section. So, I mean, the conformal blocks have a, represent a representation theoretic interpretation. So, so you're saying that there's one conformal block that is special and I'd like to know why. But this is, so you have no, no punctures here, right? It is a special situation. That's, yes, that's true. So, uh, Yeah. I'm... Right. Oh, maybe maybe I, I don't know. I, I don't have an answer to that. So I didn't uh, translate this into formal blocks. Right. So I think I have no answer. Are there any other questions after this nice talk? If not, let's thank Giovanni Felder again. And we have a longer break now. We resume in roughly one and a half hours. Is that right? Yes. So see you later.